In this short overview example, we're just going to run through the interactive sculpting menu. Sculpting tool is used to affect the working model in a very unique way that gives the user a fantastic amount of dynamic control over how the model is going to look. It's really the, one of the only ways in using a software package that you can make something look as realistic as if it was modelled by hand using clay or maybe it was carved. In this case, we've got the image of a lioness here, which is one of the tutorials that you'll work through in detail later, and we're going to use this in order to show you some of the sculpting tools. This currently is part of the working model. The sculpting tools will only interact with the working model. At any point that you wanted to sculpt a component, you would need to bring that back into the working model via the component list and the, the option on there to copy it into the model so that you could then interact with it using the sculpting tools. Sculpting tool is under the modeling tools here, it's this icon of a chisel. If we go into that, you can see the options that I have within there to smooth, smudge, deposit, remove, undo, slash, erase, or go to my twiddle view mode. Each of those has got a number next to it, and it's actually possible for me to select those on the keyboard by picking 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So that can be a very quick way for me to move between the different sculpting commands that I've got here. If I move over into the 3D view, you can see I've got this red cursor. This size of this is determined by the diameter that you can see here. And the strength of the operation is determined by this slider here. Most of the time it's better, certainly at least when you're practicing, to err on the side of a lower strength because it's easier to go over an area twice than it is to sometimes undo what you've been working on and try and do it again if you've gone too far. Some other options within the menu. Preserve transparency. This determines whether I only stick to the 3D object or whether I'm also allowed to smooth into the background area. And we'll demonstrate that in a second. And then I've got the options to just do normal sculpting or I can raise only or lower only. And again, we'll look at those options too. As I continue and do my sculpting, at various stages I might be happy with what I've done so far and want to kind of keep a record of that. If I do, then I hit the keep button and that's going to maintain the position I'm at now internally within the sculpting function. If I ever hit discard after that, it's just going to return the model back to the last stage that I hit keep. If I hit cancel, it's going to undo everything and it won't even take any notice of what I may have already kept. So if I, at any stage that I'm happy with my sculpting, I want to keep it and return out of the working model, I'm going to hit OK and we'll go back to the working model and what I've done in the sculpting tool will now become the new working model. If we wanted to, we could turn that back into a component. So let's now look at some of these options in action. The smoothing tool is a very powerful tool for blending areas together. We can see this area around the tail here needs to be blended in to make it have a more uh, a nicer transition, a more realistic looking transition. So if I want I can just set a reasonable strength and diameter and when I click with the mouse and move it back and forward that's when the sculpting actually starts to interact with the model. So I have to have the mouse button pressed down in order as you can see for that to start smoothing. So now very easy and quick for me to make that transition much smoother there between those two particular areas. As long as I have the smoothing mode set to normal, it's just going to average the heights out up and down. In some situations it might be beneficial to fix it so it will only raise points or only lower them. One area when this can be very useful is if you're trying to clean up data that's been digitized on a 3D scanner. It's fairly frequent that in three-dimensional scans you may end up with spikes or holes in the data and these can be tricky to work with. Within Aspire, we can use the raise or lower option to help us fix those. Here I've created something simulating a similar situation. If I want to zoom in on this area, at any stage if I want to zoom or twiddle the model, it's good to switch to the twiddle view, and now within the 3D view, my mouse acts as normal. So I can left mouse click in order to twiddle the object around, right mouse click to zoom. If we go back to the smooth function, what I'm going to do is fill in these two holes. I'm going to set raise only, I'm going to set a fairly small diameter and I'm just going to drag the mouse back and forward over there and we can see that just fills the hole in up to the surface of the model and doesn't try and average the part down into the hole. The opposite 
can be done on a spike if I say lower only we can come over to these areas here and I just rub back and forward over them and that's only going to lower the data until it reaches the average height of all the area around it very powerful tools and I say very useful for working with data that you've imported from a 3d scanner perhaps as an STL or a 3d DXF another very powerful tool is the smudge tool the smudge tool literally lets me drag an air, one part of material into another so if I set the strength pretty high here I'll just show you if I click here move and drag you can see it's actually dragging the higher area into the lower area similarly if I go from a low area into a high area you can see it drag the material there so I can have very very strong uh, effect on the model by using that smudge tool in order to drag the material around and you really you should use that with care and generally stick to fairly low strengths it's also possible to deposit and remove material if I wanted to start to maybe sculpt something that looks a little like hair on the animal here I would go with a fairly small diameter and we could just go back and forward maybe up the strength a little there and I can just start to just literally rub back and forward with the mouse in order to define what eventually could become a hair texture I also might want to build up quite a big area just a very small amount so I can use a very big diameter tool and then I can just go back and forward over an area with a low strength in order to build it up it's probably a little difficult to see the effect that's having if we up the strength we can see that more clearly I can remove material as well similarly it's going to depend on the size of the diameter I have selected and I could also create a hair texture by removing material just as easily as I could by actually depositing material onto it interactive undo will let me do exactly what it says if I don't like something I've been working on I can come back to the model click with the mouse and rub over it and it will return it back to the state it was in before so you can see I'm actually undoing all the things that I've done on that particular area of the job the reason an interactive undo is so important is that as I'm sculpting it's very easy for me to make a small mistake but I don't want to undo everything that I've previously been doing in the sculpting so it can be much more beneficial to me to just go back to that one area set a suitable sized um, cursor and then just undo the changes that I've made here was where we were adding extra material so you can see it's only undoing it where the cursor is another powerful command that's attached to that is the erase function if I want to literally remove a part of the um, image so let's go into the twiddle view here and we'll zoom out again maybe even look down the z-axis if I go back to that interactive undo and erase as it says here if I hold the shift key down then it's going to literally get rid of the material as I drag the cursor over it so you can see I can make very significant changes if I want to trim or crop an area out of my 3D model as soon as I do that the preserved transparency is now going to interact on this new transparent area so if I choose the smooth and we were to smooth that back edge it's now going to respect that transparency all the sculpting we've been doing we've had this preserved transparency option switched on if at any point in time I want to sculpt something and not respect the, the where the 3D model is and actually blend it into the background we can turn that off and now if I smooth here you can see that it's actually smoothing that shape into the background of my part if I set it to normal mode for the sculpting you can see it's really going to blend that out into the background and the same goes with the smudge tools so that now it's actually going to pull that into the background and it no longer respects that transparent background plane that I was working with before if I'm happy with my changes I'd hit OK essentially this doesn't look like I want it to so if I wanted to now I could just hit discard in case you hit that button by accident it will give you a second chance to say actually I didn't mean to discard it and hit no in this case I do want to discard it so I can just hit yes and it goes back to the original state that the part was in the sculpting tools are an incredibly important asset to the user within Aspire and really what sets Aspire's modelling apart from many other standard CAD systems. 
Over the course of the tutorials, you're going to see the sculpting used on almost every example that's worked through in order to give it that kind of human touch before it actually goes to the machining part of the software. And that concludes this overview of the sculpting tools.